Hey guys and welcome back to another video. This video is on recursion and more specifically we want to do a recursive function for doing division. So I'm going to first create our description here about what our program does. Alright so this program um, uses a recursive function to do division on positive integers. And I'm choosing positive integers just to make it a little bit easier for us. So let's kind of think about this. There's a few cases um, I was thinking about before. So case one is if we have zero divided by some number like uh, eight, well this equals zero with a remainder of zero. Um, case two is if we have something like uh, 6 divided by 2, this would give me 3 with a remainder of 0. Uh, case 3 is if that number is less than the, if the numerator is less than the denominator, so something like uh, 1 divided by 2, well this would equal 0 with a remainder of 1. And um, I can't think of any other cases off the top of my head right now. So these three should suffice. So let's look at case one. Now division, all division is is just subtraction. Just like all multiplication is, is addition. So when I say uh, 0 divided by 8, well in this case here, anytime I divide a number by 0, I'm going to always get the value 0. So maybe this can be like the base case or something, something like um, if, uh, well, maybe here we just say return 0 for something like this, a case like this. Alright, so let's look at case 2. Uh, we might have to come back to case one, but our base case is going to be somewhere around there. We, we definitely need to return a zero somewhere. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it's when the numerator is equal to zero. That might be uh, a base case or if we do it for some other reason. But let's look at some of, the, some of these other cases and try to get an idea of how we're going to write this. So case two is six divided by two, which equals three uh, remainder zero. All right, and I just now thought of another case, so I'm going to write that right now. I'm going to write it case four, and then we're going to go back to our, that case two there. So something like nine divided by four, this would give me um, two with a remainder of one. All right, so let me go back here to this case two here. So six divided by two. Again, like I said earlier, all division is is just subtraction. So what we're really doing is 6 minus 2, which equals 4. And I'm going to do a little counter here. So count each time we have to go through this. So counter equals 1. All right, so then we do 4 minus 2, which gives me 2. So our counter increments by 1, we get 2. And then we do 2 minus 2, which equals 0. So our counter equals 3, and then that's what we're going to return. So then we know 6 divided by 2 equals 3. And for case 2, I just do another example. I'm just going to call it example 2. Um, yeah, we'll call it example 2. And let's see, I have a number like uh, 8 divided by 4, which equals 2 with a remainder of 0. And we're going to do the same thing. 8 minus 4 equals 4. Uh, counter equals 1. Then we get 4 minus 4, which equals 0. And so our counter equals 2. And then we're going to return that 2. Okay, so it's looking like 
like the base case is should be um if we see zero then return z zero or something like that. I'm still trying to figure it out, but we're getting there, I think. So let's look at case three. So case three is one divided by two, and that's equal to zero with a remainder of one. So for division, it would be something like one minus two, which gives me negative one. And then of course our counter would equal one, and that's wrong. So, hmm. So it looks like um, for case one here and for case three here, I have to, I have to do something different because here we, we just return zero if we see zero. How about if we see that this value is less than this value, we return zero. So something like if um, zero is uh, less than eight, return zero. And in this case, it would be if one is less than two, return zero. Okay, we're not gonna worry about the remainders yet, but uh, that's what I want. I want it to return this value here. So it's just gonna return zero if the numerator is greater than the denominator. So I'm gonna change this from zero to numerator. I'm gonna change this eight to denominator. And I hope I'm spelling those correctly. If not, I uh, just probably need to go back to English class. Okay, so numerator and denominator. So that that's looking like a good base case. Um, yeah, so Uh, maybe here our counter, maybe here our counter equals zero. Uh, okay, so anyways, we're, we're gonna keep uh, we'll keep thinking about that. So now I'm gonna do case uh, four, and that's nine divided by four, which is equal to two with a remainder of one. So that's just gonna be nine minus four, which equals five. Our counter will equal 1. And then we do 5 minus 4, which equals 1. So our counter equals 2. And then we get to that case where we have uh, 1 minus 4. So that's our, our uh, numerator and our denominator. And then maybe it's just going, I mean, this will equal like uh, negative 3 or something. But this should hit our base case, and we should just return return zero. Okay, so I can kind of see how I'm going to write this program now. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. So first, I'm going to include our standard input output dot h library. Then I'm going to create our main function and return the value zero. Um, I'm going to create our function now. It's going to return an integer. I'm going to call it recursive division. So right now all we're going to worry about are just these numbers here. I'm not going to worry about the remainder yet because I could really just use a modulus or something like that for that. Or we can do it recursively too and think about it. I don't know which one I want to do yet. So let's just go ahead and uh, continue with the recursive division. And it's going to take in a numerator. And it's going to take in a denominator. All right. And let's go ahead and create, I mean, let's go ahead and uh, add some code in there. So we said our base case is if our numerator is less than our um, denominator, then we will 
return the value 0. OK. Else, what we're going to return is, um, well, we want to keep decrementing our, our numerator. So I'm going to return the numerator, the numerator minus the denominator. So the numerator minus the denominator. Because that's essentially what we're doing here. If I, uh, if we look at it, we can see that this is the current numerator, this is the current denominator, and then we get 5. So 5 becomes our new numerator, and it's 5 minus 4, uh, 4 is our denominator, so then we subtract those, and we get 1. And then 1 becomes our new numerator, and 4 is our denominator. So uh, that's us just iterating through the recursive loop. Okay, um, but I need to keep a count of uh, I need to keep a count of of everything that's going through here. So I am going to I guess I could create a variable called count. Let's see if that works. Integer count, and it's going to equal zero at first. And maybe instead of returning um, zero, we're just going to return our count, and then maybe we'll increment count here by one. Count equals count plus one, and then we'll just add our count. Okay, so that looks like that should be it. So this would be our base case. And down here is our recursive case. And let's give it a spin. Um, I'm going to create two variables. Integer a is going to equal, let's say 0, to try some of our cases. Integer b will equal 8. And then we're going to do a print statement. Print f percent d divided by percent d equals percent d. We're not going to worry about the remainder yet. Backslash n. We're going to do a comma b. And then maybe we'll get another variable called answer. And our answer is going to be uh, our answer is going to be um, a divided by b. So our answer again is equal to uh, it's supposed to be a divided by b, but again, we're not going to use this operator. We're going to use our recursive function instead. So I'm just going to put that here. And then we're going to input our parameter, our input into our parameters a and b. All right, so let's see if we get back the value zero. Okay, guess I have to save this file. I will call it. Um, how about recursive division dot c? Recursive division dot c. Perfect. Okay, like I have some errors. Let's see what's going on here. Um, error message. Error expected. Expected it equals or a semicolon and function main. Okay, let me just copy this. And then make sure that this is the same here. Let's run it again, see if we get the same error. Yep. Okay, so let's see what's wrong here. We have integer. Um, so we're turning it int, which is good. Okay, we're calling it uh, recursive 
division. We're doing number and include stdio.h. We have our integer numerator and our denominator. So let's see what else it says here. Each undeclared identifier is reported only once for each function it appears. Huh. Right, integer, um, and then numerator, integer, denominator. So everything's looking fine there. I have my semicolon. Let's see here. Let's um comment out a few things. Let's comment this out. Let's comment this out. Let's run the program. Okay, yes, because it doesn't know what answer is. So I'm just going to set answer equal to something here. Answer equals zero. Okay. Here, we're getting that same error message. So what is it expecting to do? Let's comment this out. And let's come back to that. Okay. So we're getting somewhere now. Let's try to uncomment this and then run. And now we get an error message. Okay. Uh, ah, I see. Wow. So it looks like I have a space here. All right. So let's just go back. Get rid of that space. Get rid of that space. Get rid of that space. So that's why it was expecting an equal sign or something like that. It was expecting that for this uh, recursive, it would have been a variable. So that's what it was expecting, um, the equal sign or the semicolon. And I'm actually kind of glad that it happened because you guys can see how to debug your code a little bit. So now, okay, so yes, I forgot. Here's the space again. And now run that integer. Oh, now it's saying that uh, I redefine answer. So that's because I have to comment this out. And now there we go. Okay, so we get exactly what we wanted or what we expected. And let's change the variable b to something like uh, 9 and run it. We get 0 divided by 9 equals 0. Perfect. Uh, let's try another case that we had up here, like 6 divided by 2. So 6 divided by 2. So this should give us 3. So 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. And let's try another one, uh, like uh, 1 divided by 2. So 1 divided by 2 gives us 1 divided by 2 equals 0, right, with the remainder of 1. So that's good. That's what we wanted. And then 9 divided by 4. And then 9 divided by 4 gives us 2, which is good, and it should have a remainder of 1. So let's go ahead and write that in here as well with a remainder of, and then we do percent %d. And then uh, I'll go ahead and create a variable called remainder. And get rid of that comment up there. And remainder is just going to be um, a mod b. So this is the non-recursive way to do it. And let's run this now. So 9 divided by 4 equals 2 with the remainder of 1. Perfect. And let's do 3 divided by 4. That should be 0 with the remainder of 3. 3 divided by 4 equals 0 with the remainder of 3. Perfect. Um... I kind of want to create this uh, remainder here, uh, this modulus operator. So let's do it recursively. I'm going to just copy and paste what we have there. And I'm going to call it recursive 
remainder. Okay, and then I'm going to copy that. And let's add it here. And I'll probably just copy this code. It's going to be a little different, but I can see um, a few similarities already when trying to get the remainder. Okay. So instead of us returning uh, uh, our counter here, all I want to return is that number. So for instance, here for 9 divided by 4 we get 2 with the remainder 1 well how do we know it's the remainder 1 well that's because of this last numerator here so when when our numerator is less than our denominator all we have to do is return our numerator so that means that I don't need to add a counter to this I just need to use this recursive case to loop through Get rid of this counter here. I can get rid of this variable here. And I can just return the numerator. Okay, and now I'm just going to change our remainder and use this function here. It's going to take an A and B. Okay, so let's give this a run. Perfect. So 3 divided by 4 equals 0. So all we're doing is returning the uh, numerator with the remainder of 3. And let's try 1 divided by 4. That should give us 0 with the remainder of 1. 1 divided by 4 equals 0 with the remainder of 1. So pretty simple, pretty easy. And, uh, oh, let's try uh, 9 divided by 4. So that should be... Uh, 0 with the remainder of 1, right? Oh, I'm sorry, it should be 2 with a remainder of 1 because 2 times 4 equals 8 and 9 minus 8 equals 1. So, sorry about that. But yes, the program got it right. I obviously am not a computer. Okay, so that's perfect. It looks like that'll be it. Um, and I guess to clean it up a little bit, we really don't need this counter variable. We'll just use zero here. And we don't really need this count to be uh, equal to count plus one. Because we can just use the value one here. And let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So you see, we still get the same results. Just make our code look a little bit cleaner. And I think that's it. Yep. All right. So thank you guys uh, for watching this video. And please leave likes, comments, any questions you have about what I did here, maybe how I debugged it, um, maybe why uh, or why we can get rid of that count variable, um, how exactly did I come up with all these different cases and scenarios, uh, whatever you would like, uh, please leave those comments and I try my best to, to answer them for you. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.